Uh, welcome and thanks everyone. Um, like, like Raj, it's been great to see the growth in gene therapy over, uh, over the years and uh, this conference, a lot going on to help patients. So, wanted to take some time to talk about Agathos, a uh, relatively new company, uh, been around for uh, a couple years. <clears throat> so we, um, our name is, means good, brave, or moral, so it's kind of our aspirational goal. So we were founded to advance genetic medicine with novel platforms and therapeutics and tools. And um, our goal is to ethically deliver and develop these things and avoid um, issues around aborted fetal tissue and embryonic stem cells. So we're looking to make a difference in, in all of these areas of medicine, including that. So our strategic focus is really going to be in three areas, um, biomanufacturing. So we want to look at cells from various sources to identify potential materials to do biomanufacturing, both in cell and gene therapy and just in general. Um, we're also interested in novel payload delivery, so viral vectors are great, um, but there's a lot of research out there in other modalities to deliver genetic materials, so we're excited about that science and interested in pursuing those. And ultimately, we'd like to be involved in developing therapeutics and diagnostics uh, for unmet medical needs. As we grow as a company and develop in these different programs, we want to offer uh, products and services and collaborations um, as well uh, to the industry, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, at the end. So I think we all can agree that there are opportunities to make a difference in the space. So uh, a survey of employers found that 86% of them are concerned about some of these very expensive therapies that are now coming out and how they will be paid for. There's over 7,000 diseases that um, could potentially be treated with gene therapy, which is an exciting opportunity, but means that we have to support those and, and, and the manufacturing requirements and other requirements of that. Um, we see an increase in non-medical exemptions for vaccines due to religious concerns, and there's you know political issues around um, potential legislation about labeling the use of materials that are, or products that are produced using aborted fetal material that we would just like to avoid. So our headquarters are in labs are in, in Fargo, so the founders of the company, uh, John Ballantyne, Michael Chambers, and myself were um, Aldevron employees. John and Michael founded Aldevron in 1998, and I joined there in 2015, and then started at Agathos in 2021. Um, so if you don't know where Fargo is, we're in North Dakota. It's a lot colder there than it is here right now, so it was a pleasure to come out here. Um, so we have uh, 10,000 square feet of lab and um, office space. Um, it's a growing uh, community. There's a picture of downtown there. It's a growing biotech uh, hub, we like to call it, as uh, really driven by the success of Aldevron and the growth there has enabled other companies to grow. So you're probably all familiar with the standard uh, transient transfection for um, recombinant AAV production with 293. We have three uh, plasmids that are trans co-transfected into 293 cells, and then um, AAV is harvested and purified from that, and you get um, the AAV capsid uh, with the transgene encapsidated in that protein. So, as we looked at different um, cell lines and opportunities to develop cells for biomanufacturing, we looked at BHK21, which had been around a very long time. So we did an experiment where we took that candidate cell and stably transfected it with a plasmid with uh, the E1 gene, the sequences. We tried a, a variety of sequences, and uh, the one that seemed to have the most promise was the, what, what we call the wild type E1 sequence, so the same sequence as 293, and we created a cell that was then expressing the E1, so we thought, can we use the same process um, for our AV production that we use with 293, so triple transfection with now the BHK E1 cells, and, and what do we get out of that? So we presented um, our first data as a company in uh, May of this year at the ASGCT conference, the barcode there, or QR code you can use to download the, um, the poster. 
Um, and so we looked at capsids and viral genomes and we got something out. So we saw some um, AV production, um, detected via ELISA and uh, digital PCR. So we looked to see, you know, are the particles that were produced effective and what was their composition? So we looked at the VP1, VP2, VP3 and got ratios sort of in the neighborhood of what you would expect with other methods and on a, on a per viral genome basis, the virus was about as infectious as uh, what you would get from 293. So we wanted to look at that further and investigate other serotypes. So we looked at AV2, 5, 6, and 8. Um, and the, the graph shows the crude lysate production for capsids and viral genomes. And in most cases, we're in somewhere in the mid 10 to the 9th VG per mil uh, there. And um, the packaging is about what you would expect with, with other methods, you know, somewhere in the 15 to 30 percent. And these were uh, experiments that were done in, uh, three times, so biological replicates. So we wanted to continue to, to look at that. And this is um, uh, the previous uh, data was serum-free media, so we looked at some protocols that used serum throughout, so we wanted to, to test that data as well, and this is initial data, N of 1, so we need to repeat this, but we found similar results as far as vi viral genomes and mostly uh, with the uh, percent full, although we did see some um, higher numbers with AV5 and 6, but we need to reproduce this data to, uh, to ensure that it's real. Um, we have uh, an undisclosed clinical candidate that we're looking at, um, we call AGA 101, so we wanted to test sort of a, a real uh, therapeutic transgene with this method. And again, um, this is very early initial data of our first experiment, but we found similar results, maybe a little bit better in the, uh, in the 10 to the 10th range as far as the viral genomes. Um, the number of genomes per cell was a little lower, a little lower, but these cells, when you look in the microscope, they're much smaller than 293, so that's to be expected. But we need to repeat these experiments and also um, test these in the, um, the disease model to see if they're um, uh, efficacious. So one of the things we want to look at doing is, is producing um, AV in suspension. So we're we're undertaking a project to suspension adapt these cells. So again, this is very early uh, experiments. Um, titer's a little on the low side for uh, these initial experiments, 10 to the 8th, but we're just getting started and looking forward to finding ways to increase the yield um, in suspension. So, you know, our goal is really to continue development with this cell line. Um, we want to sequence and characterize the cell line, you know, where, where in the cell line is, is the gene, how many copies, things like that. Are there better gene editing techniques that we could use to maybe increase the production by putting um, the E1 cassette in a specific place? Um, we want to reproduce the data, so as of now, we're the only ones that have done this, and it, as far as we can um, tell, the only time a cell line other than 293 has been shown with triple transfection to make AEV, so we're looking for collaborators to help validate or verify those results and work with us. Um, ultimately, as a small company, revenue is always good, so um, if we're able to produce research-grade viral vectors, we're also looking at lentivirus. Can we make lentivirus with this cell line as well? and suspension adapt and otherwise scale up uh, the whole process. So we have three collaborations across the U.S. and um, so we're excited to have people testing ourselves in other areas and collaborators. So we're actively looking for others interested in helping us out. Uh, so that's why the Year Lab here there is there. So definitely want to talk to people at the meeting who would be interested in helping us uh, verify our results as well as further develop the line. And we do have active work in 
looking at other cell sources, um, re again, repurposing another existing cell line like BHK, uh, newly harvested primary cells that we can immortalize, and uh, stem cell-derived primary cells. So again, we're interested in talking to people that have cells that might be useful for biomanufacturing in this area. So I'll just end with uh, analytical services. So as a small company, revenue is always good. So we've developed capabilities as we've been doing research and development on the cell line that we're offering to the industry to um, provide good services and uh, generate some revenue. So we purchased and have a good collaboration with Kyogen and their Kyacuity instrument. Um, there's lots of advantages with digital PCR. A lot of folks have these in their labs. We presented a poster that we co-authored with Kyogen at, at ASGCT in May, and it's um, the, bar, the QR code there you can use to download that poster. So we're excited about that collaboration. We have multiple clients now, a couple in the AV space and, and other areas in CAR-T. So we're looking to expand that for companies that are smaller, just want to outsource some of this work, uh, we can help. And we're developing you know, better AV assays with Kyogen and look forward to working with them to do that and providing you know, reference standards and other materials that will be helpful in measuring um, AV titers. Um, we also have an, a high content imaging system called Operetta and we've collaborated with uh, some professors at NDSU. So this is some data around um, a chemotherapeutic agent for triple negative breast cancer that's within a uh, nanomaterial that we've imaged using this system. It's got some machine learning capabilities in it as well. So we're collaborating with them and also looking to provide these services to others that might find them useful in their own research. So appreciate your time and attention. Um, these are, again, QR codes for the posters that I uh, had referenced before. And um, I'm a little uh, ahead of time, so I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has any. Thank you so much.